gotta say, Jackson has been a surprise. I didn't think it would be like this, to be honest. No one in my family finished high school, and I'm the youngest of six. We still in the city, but a lot of these places used to be businesses. If you want to make it, then this is what you do, and you will be successful. What is dress? Tell Salad dress? <laughs> you guys love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was the turning point? Because getting kicked out of 10 schools doesn't lead to PhD usually. This is the part that they don't show. It's like this world, not the world, but the people inside the world have changed. When you look around, you're telling me I can be a lawyer, man, I can be an astronaut. <laughs> How can you expect me to grow up and dream that big? This is where my family was raised. My mom had five sisters on this one street. When people think of hood, you would say low socioeconomics, um, urban, but I want to widen the screen on what that looks like because these are still working families over here. Like if you see some of your houses, these are some of your most genuine people. This is my elementary school is now closed down. Why is it closed down? From what I've heard is economics. This is my middle school. I don't know the real reason why it's closed down, but this place made me who I am today though. Okay. This neighborhood develops people in a totally different way. When you think about resilience, grit, the ability to bounce back, man, I was taught so much just in this environment. And there's things you can get over here that you're not gonna get anywhere else. When I was growing up, man, this is the recreation for us. The fact that they shut the schools down, the school really gave us a meeting place to come to. This whole neighborhood would be packed with kids, man. Okay. The swimming pool area, the playground. This is a different lifestyle when you're in the neighborhood. Okay. Because from the outside, it looked like, okay, it's, it's horrible, it's bad. Nah, man, these are great working people. And then certain people, when you think about it, like where I stand now, this is how you define success. Some people define success different. Some don't need the big house, the cars, mm -hmm. and all of the things that, that we talk about when we identify with success. These people are some, some of them over here are really at peace. I haven't been on this bridge in a long time, man, but it brings back so many memories, man. I think Just coming up here as a kid. Coming up here as a kid, watching people swim. You want to see some of your best Olympians, the way we, we used to take bed mattresses, put them over in the field and we tumble. Kids walking bicycles, popping willies down the road. That was before we had the cell phones, the internet moving in the way that it's moving now. So this was all fun. This is something that I, this is all I knew. I came from a broken home. So when you think about my mom and dad, got divorced when I was in the second grade. Okay. My mom and dad don't have an education past middle school, but those are the most smartest individuals I know. My mom is probably the smartest woman I know without an education. So the variables that I had to face growing up, it's just about how you deal with it. Okay. The way that I cope with some of my issues was playing basketball. But when you look around, and you see across this track, you telling me I can be a lawyer, I can be a doctor, man, I can be an astronaut, <laughs> I can be all these things, but if I don't have those variables in my neighborhood, how can you expect me to grow up and dream that big? No one in my family finished high school before me, and I'm the youngest of six. So I didn't get the homework assistance in my house where we talked about report cards or the, the future, what you wanted to do in school. My mom and dad were what I, what I call hustlers. My mom and dad, at any means necessary, they're going to make sure we have a roof over our head, food to eat, and clothes on our back. And that's one of the modes that I really hate operating in, survival mode, because I done been in survival mode majority of my life. When a person in survival mode, they got the mentality that I'm going to survive at any means necessary. 
So you, I don't do you think most of these kids are in survival mode out here? A lot of them. A lot okay. of them are. But again, it's some straight A students in this neighborhood. Yep. It's some working families that's, that never been to jail. Their kids have never shot a gun before in this same neighborhood. That's why I was saying when we put that umbrella of hood and we labeled them a, a certain way, that's not the majority of the neighborhood. Yeah, so if you look by the numbers, Jackson right now is second most dangerous city in the country. Per capita murders, break-ins, burglaries. What does that mean? Unpack so, that for so me. I bet you, I can almost bet you, the person that invented robbing, I bet he was broke. You don't steal when you don't have to, right? You don't break in houses and, and rob individuals when you don't have to. So it's an economic thing. When you look at certain areas, right, for an example, and it's crime everywhere, but you're not gonna really see in-house crime in certain neighborhoods, why? Because when you got young men that don't know when their next meal is coming from, you don't, they don't know um, how they're gonna eat tomorrow, they don't have the shoes, they don't have the clothes. Yeah. And they are in survival mode every day. So. But Tommy, I gotta push back on one bit of that. I've been to Bangladesh, India. Yeah. Poor, poor. Like this is like Beverly Hills compared to there. And that's why I said and, this is but, beautiful. But, but they're not, they're poor, but they're not robbing. I no, say no, at the no. same okay. levels. Okay. So I, don't, I can't necessarily they this, connect poverty to forcing one to rob. No, let me put a better label on okay. that. Because I said at the beginning of it, you have your different people, that's, that your different groups. Okay. Majority of the people that I'm speaking on, when I think of hood, they not doing that. They not out robbing. I'm talking about the individuals who come from this area who think they are forced to. They not, think they're forced to. They think to. they are forced to. Why do they not, think they're forced to? Because think about it, man. I'm in a house. You telling me to go do 12 years in school. You telling me I can go get a bachelor's degree. I can go get a master's degree. And yet I've proved that that's right, that yep. you could do that. Okay. But, but the majority of the young kids that can't see life past tomorrow, a lot of young kids can't see that he can be a lawyer and a doctor if we don't expose him to it. So right. we're talking about that population of kids that don't know no other way out. Yep. That's the population of kids I'm talking about. So whose but, responsibility that is that? Is us. that the parent? That's the parents' that's, responsibility, society's responsibility. Who's our responsibility? That's my they responsibility. That's your responsibility to come in here and so to listen, show the kid there's a way out. A way. They say it takes a village to raise a child, right? Okay. But what if the village corrupt? So if it takes a village to raise a child, what if the village corrupt? What if I see, you know, every time I see on the news and I'm seeing this, this young man judged and gave him all these years, young, 13, 14 years old, doing some of the same stuff that I did. But I'm like, that is somebody's nephew. That is somebody's son. That is somebody's neighbor. But the way times are now, if you say something to any kid right now, the media and anybody, don't tell me how to raise my child. So if, if nobody gonna hold us accountable, then who job, like your job is to show me my way out. I'm okay. young, I'm a kid, I don't know okay. it all. What about the victims? The 15 year old, you know, robs the old lady, yeah. breaks her pelvis when he jumps her on the street, her life is ruined. What about her? That's horrible. Okay. I don't support that. So what should happen to the kid at that point in time? In a situation like that? Yeah, yeah. I think we gotta, the law gonna do a deal with him. So you but think you gotta, the law should be hard on that kid or it should be, hey, he's a kid, he had a bad upbringing? I think you gotta evaluate that. I think you gotta understand what was his mental capacity. Trauma and ACEs is real. And what that does to the brain is a blockage there. So when you think that a kid should know right from wrong, yeah, that's true, but is he thinking cognitively though? Is he, is he rationalizing? Is he using um, his, the skills that, that we have, reasoning skills? You know, I go in prisons a lot, and I break it down to him, and I ask him, I said, hey, man, when you was committing your crime, what was your mentality? And he was like, man, I would just move. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking at the time. That's a problem to me. So I asked a young man, judge gave him like 30 or 40 years in prison. 
I said, hey man, well, what did you do? You had, a, you had the young lady at gunpoint. He said, I said, well, what did you get? He said, I got a cell phone, a credit card, and $10 out of a purse. I said, man, I can cut my phone off from right, like my phone is locked, you'll never use it. He said, I never thought about that before. That's a problem. Then he said, I tried to use the credit card and I couldn't even use it, it was cut off. He said, I never even thought about it. A person can cut their credit card off from anywhere. I said, you can never use it. I said, now they booked you with $10. The first thing he told me was, man, I never thought about that before. Why, now that's what I'm talking about. Why is it the first time you hearing about these things? Because you didn't, you didn't see it all the way through. You were impulsive. I'm not giving you a pass because of what you did. I'm trying to get you to think. I'm trying to get you to look at cause and effect. So when a ki certain kids that's put in those situations, they would tell you yes, sir, all day. A lot of those kids are not bad kids, but they were caught in bad situations. But to get back to your question, okay. the law is the law. I can't, it's nothing I can do about that. But I also want to go to the backstory of that kid and right. see what, because I can't stop him from doing what he doing, and I'm not on either side of the law to say right. what he should and what he shouldn't get. But yeah. I'm trying to say how we develop a kid to think different. Okay, yeah, and that's that's the key, education. Education. Education every, is every, so they need good parenting. So you, you, you said you grew up in a broken home, right? Yes. Your parents got divorced, so that led you to commit crimes, to so, get kicked out of schools. Man, it's a lot when you unpack my life story. When you think about my story, I was kicked out of 10 schools, 10. Oh, I thought it was smart to be dumb and dumb to be smart. You got respect for that, right? Yes. The kids thought you were cool. I did, I got respect for it, but I never wanted to be in school. My, my um, anxiety level in a school. Yeah. And then think about the stuff, when you think about ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, what that does to a kid brain. Yep. So when you see me growing up a certain way, some of the stuff that I was accustomed to growing up, when I get in that school, my mind is not on school at the moment because you know what? It feel like it's forced on me. Yeah, you, you I, felt the, you, I felt the same way. You was told, I didn't want to be there. you gotta go to school. Yeah. You gotta go to church, sure. all of the, those two. Yeah, but didn't just like because either. just because I'm there doesn't mean that I'm, I'm activated. You gotta yeah. activate first, then educate. What that mean? Let me unpack. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta activate the kid first, then you educate. When you get a debit card in the mail, no matter how much money you got in the bank, yep. you can't use it until you do what with it? Yeah, activate, activate it. it. Yeah. So no matter how much potential this kid got inside, he can't be used until he's activated first. You got to reach your self-esteem level. You got to get me in a place where I enjoy myself. I love myself. I got the confidence to go in that building right. and, and be a, a scholar. Okay. But a kid like me, I never saw it modeled before. I didn't want to be in that building first. I thought I couldn't read like other kids. So that's unpacking who I am though. You can't leave me out until you can enter my world. You got to see, well, well, why is this kid thinking like that? Man, you okay, know what? Okay, so fair to say, if the parents, they're imparting good values upon their kid, they're good examples, most likely, there are always uh, exceptions, yeah. the kid's going to be much better off. So why, if someone brings, I'm going out on a tangent here, Tommy. Yeah. And uh, push back as hard as you want on this one. You choose to have a child, bring that child into this world, right? Correct. As a parent, that's your responsibility to, to provide for them, to give them guidance, to, to, to show them the path, let's say, to not commit crime, to work, to go for something in life, right? To do right. good to others. Why is that my personal responsibility to help out some other family when I'm just, I'm swimming as hard as I can to stay above and keep my family in a good place? Okay, do you know how many people I visit across this world and they tell me, I didn't raise him like that. What he doing right now, I didn't raise him like that. And no, you didn't. But when he leave your, your house, Bad company, corrupt character. Okay. No matter how, and this is going to tie into your question. I don't care how good of a parent you are. When you leave that, when your kid leave from around your supervision, where is he placed now? In a community. So when you, when you get back to that, if when I leave my kids right now, 
I expect for a community to be at that school or in that neighborhood to help me out. Because you said it takes, not you, but the world said it takes a village to raise a child. So that get back to my, my, my statement. It take us. Because when, you right, when you're not around your child, when this kid get in this neighborhood right now, yeah. I need to be able to say, your, your dad didn't raise you like that. Your mom didn't raise you like that. Come here, young man. If I don't tell him that. I agree. I, I look at it like this, Tommy. You have a good salad with great lettuce and tomatoes and peppers and everything, yeah. right? And then you, you put bad dressing on it, you ruin the whole salad. Yes. So that's how I look at society too. Yeah, you can bubble up and try to stay separate from all the problems. I mean, that's a natural line of defense, I'd say. But if we don't address some of these deeper issues as a society, like it eventually hits everyone. Like you're on the highway and someone's on drugs and they smash into your daughter's car, Correct. right? Because they weren't in the right headspace. And it's because some people are really suffering in society. I mean, that's the reason I like doing these videos. She need help like, though. They, she, she, they need help, right? The parent need us. When, you, when, that, when my kid leave that house, if I had a community of people that would hold my kid accountable, because you know what? When I was growing up, we know what my grandparents told me? If they get into any trouble before they make it home, the Sunday school teacher would I already give them a whooping. The neighbor would okay. I already give uh, That's the village I'm speaking on, but what that was was accountability. That's not where we, that's not the generation. So I see it in some small towns in America that still exists. Yeah. This neighbor's watching over this one. No kid can get out of line because yeah. everyone's going to call it out. Correct, I correct. see it in some places. In some places, I don't. That's what we got to get back to. So I yeah. said, if we don't get back to that, yep. then you tell me who fault is that. Because we can't wait till it hit my house and then now I got on the shirts and I'm walking down the neighborhood and I'm telling everybody, um, stop the violence, stop the violence. I get what we're saying. But just because it didn't hit my house don't mean I'm supposed to stay in the house and not join it. It's strength in numbers. If, if, if everybody in this neighborhood said don't throw no, no trash in my neighborhood, don't like, like you should never know when you are in the hood. So why are people not standing up in the hood? Why don't they stand up and call out all that BS? And I have, my, I have my theories. Tell me where I'm wrong here. They're scared. People are scared of the 15 year old with a gun right now. Like the parents have lost a lot of control for a lot of the youth, from what I've seen. You is can't, that, you can't, right? you can't be scared of the people you serve. But, I, but you're I, saying I, the I know, truth. but but that's what's going but that's on, right? Reality was what you're saying. It is reality, but yeah. you can't be scared of the people you serve. It's strength in numbers. You know how many strong men in this neighborhood that that raised me? Like this is my neighbor. Ton of talent, right? Ton, ton of talent. It's a young man that I'm tutoring now, uh, not tutoring, mentoring. He's going to the Navy. I'm like, man, you finna create something for your neighborhood. It is real good people in the neighborhood. But how many men you know that's over here that will stand? It's a lot of men. Just imagine if we got together as men and we, and we walked the neighborhood and we said, nah, man, not on our watch. You're not about to destroy our neighborhood. Not on my watch. Look at their gardening out here. Oh, yeah, that's man. That's cool. Come on, let's see the best. This is cool, Tommy. They're How you doing, man? Growing vegetables look, look, out here. Get this right here. Y'all have any bags in your car? Nuh-uh. I wanted him to see this. Um, this is the neighborhood I grew up in, and I just told him. I said, man, when the outside see the neighborhood, they always see what the bads. They always showing, but it's great people in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I just told him. I said, man. It's people in this neighborhood that'll give you anything. Yeah. You just put, like how you just right. welcoming us here. Right. So tell them yeah. about what you're doing, man. Yeah, yeah what's man, going on? Here, what are you growing? I'm out here getting some family for the old folk, greens, and for the Christmas holiday. And uh, I'm just going to give them to the community. Oh, to that's cool. Folk, to the old OK, whose place is this? Who's this, growing Ms. this? Miss Amy. Miss Amy? This is a community okay. garden. Yeah. OK. And anyone can come in to get anything. When they plant it and it grows up, they can come out and get anything they want out the garden. There's nothing to see it. That's great. I love that, man. Yeah, I mean, Miss Amy, she, she stayed there. And I don't forgot that lady's name right there, but she know all my grandchildren. She's a white lady too, you know what I'm saying? This the part of the world I want them to see. Like, 
I come from this area. It's not all bad. It's great. Man, you just said this is a community garden where we can come and eat. This is what I mean by it takes a village because I know it's a place where I can come and get resources. I can come. That's what the neighbor, but we don't show that too often. No. Nope. We always showing the violence, the guns. No, it's great. So you need you need kids getting involved with this, right? Like yeah. them getting out, coming out here, getting their vegetables, bringing home. That's what Do needs to happen. Do you see a lot right? of young kids? No, all you know, you know, y'all folks, man. I'm gonna be being real honest about it. They don't have the mind like we have. When we came up, you know. I'm 67 years old. When I was coming up, my mama took me to the field and showed me different stuff. You understand what we had to do to survive off of? Correct. And so like, you know, only thing I see is just older, you know, older people that come out sometimes. You don't see them too much come out sometimes because you really, I'm just being honest about it. It's bad over this side of time. You know what I mean? Crime is everywhere. Folks shooting you, walking by, pass by shooting, you know, things ain't just like it used to be. It's not, not it's like this world, and, not the world, but the people inside the world have changed. So you when know? you, when you grew up, Less violence, less gun, no, gun deaths. No, 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 no. We was doing this. We was yeah. fist fighting. Okay. Yeah, but all this shooting and cutting and all that, it wasn't none of that when I was coming. Do you feel like your generation taught my generation this, or did? Where do you think the well, world was? My, well, see, my generation taught me this. Yeah. And so what? Okay, when your my generation had to pass down to you to teach you, if Good. you don't ever. If you don't need to teach nobody nothing, how is they gonna learn? I agree with that. I agree with how that you statement. Gonna learn? But you, first of all, you wanna learn, you gotta want to do it. You I was just, do I was just telling him. I was taught, taught growing up, it take a village to raise a child. You do. But I said, well, what if the village corrupt? Because what you just told me was, in your generation. If you see anything going on, older people would tell me to this day, man, you couldn't walk down the neighborhood and break in somebody's house back then. Like the neighbor would have give would whoop right, you. Right. But now it's different and you can't be scared of the people you serve. So when you see young kids coming up, since times are different, you're not gonna stop him and say, hey man, put that gun up because it's totally different yeah, mindset. Yeah, now. yeah, because you but, don't know what their mind is right. on. What is you talking about? How you know, boom boom, I shot you. you correct, know? correct. Just because you just trying to tell them something right. You know what I mean? But you know, I don't get involved in it. I just see him and let him go on about the business. See, that's the problem. Yeah. You see what I just said? Yeah. That's the, that's but the, that's my original but that point. was your original people, point. People are scared. But yeah, you yeah. can't, but, yeah. but, but how do you expect change if you're scared to get in front of it? I get, no, no, don't okay. think I'm missing it. But when you say I just see him and I just turn my back and go the other way. But, but tell you why, most of them are, I see with guns. No. God, I, this long, damn side them, damn near taller than them. I get it. You know what I'm saying? And see that, but when are, gonna 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 uh -huh. when are we ever going to say something about that? When are we ever going to say something about it? We ain't going to say nothing about it. So that means it's going to continue? Yeah, it's going to have to continue. <laughs> Y'all, and continue. nobody see the problem yeah, in that. If it was you and 30 other guys in this neighborhood, you would go up to them then because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be acceptable. No. But, but, yeah, but reason why? Because I got to look. You know, I got to listen nah. behind me, you know what yeah, I mean? Because but strength in numbers. Right, you have a community right, right, around you. Right. That's the difference. Not right. you go individually. I'm saying how, because it's one thing we talk about the problem, but then we don't have the solution. Like, we're not talking about solutions. Right. The solution is you got to in-house this. We got to get better as a group. Right. And as a group, we get together, then you would approach him. Because that's somebody's son in his neighborhood. That's that true. is somebody that is somebody nephew. That's, that's in his neighborhood. That's but true. now you know his mom, his auntie, and y'all all together. Yeah. yeah. But it, if we don't get together and unite as a group. Well let me ask you a question. How could you bring black people together? And when they do not want to try to unite, they all stuck on this gang banging. And you not on this, you on a diff on another level trying to show them the way of living about life. You understand? Know trying to tell them about life. But now how could you how could you intervene on that? You lost at that point. Yeah. Cause you're gonna get pushed back. No. You lost. Yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. And see, game battle, man, I you know, I had a son in game battle, man. I had to get him out of that, man. I broke him from that. Because I told him it's not doing them no good. All the things you think you got friends out here, you get into some trouble and see how many friends that you do have. No, you're telling them right. Pardon. You're telling said, them now right. What you need to do is come away from out these streets, go get you a job and work and try to come up to have something like that. And get what he did. What'd he do? Come out the street, get him a job. See there? But where did something. it but where did it start? For me. All right. It's so y'all just made what I because now you just did that reach one, teach one method. 
But now you just gave him a different way of looking at life. Right. Now imagine if it was a hundred more of us like you that's not scared to take that. You know how many other success stories we will have? Now a lot of kids are not gonna listen, I get that, they're gonna give you the pushback. But as a community, if we all doing that, I don't, I might be different from everybody else. Cause when I see them, I see kings, okay. I see leaders. I, I see kings, I, I see king, but kings. it's hard for me to see them the way that everybody else see them right. because I come from that. From I that, come from that that, that vein. Yeah, I was saying. But and I'm always the guy that's looking at the positive perspective of everything. Right. Yeah, he going through problems. He got problems here and there. But that boy can be amazing. Yeah. How do I know that? Because God did it with yeah, me. Yeah, you see it. I think he knew that he needed me to show them a different way. But I'm not going to give up on him. All right. I'm not giving up on him. I feel like it's a way out. Yeah. It's us for us to show them. Yeah, it is a way out. It is a way out. But you thank you, man. Yeah, my name is TLC, man. Peter, meet y'all. Nice Peter. to meet you, sir. All right, then. Yeah. All right, y'all have a blessed day. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Uh, so, Tommy, this is what I've learned from going to a lot of inner city America. If kids don't have father figures, if young men don't have father figures, right, they usually get rambunctious, shout out, cause violence, destroy things, steal things, and join gangs because they're craving a father figure. They're, they're craving leadership, and so the gang offers that, right? The hierarchy of that gang, or at least being part of something at the very least. You're almost part of a family. Am I right on that? I think it's a way to look at that too. Okay. Man, I've, I've been a single parent for a week one time, <laughs> one week. Okay. Man, do you know you got how divorced hard, for a week? Listen, for one week. You know I give all the credit to single parent moms, man. Uh, it's gotta because be brutal. It's, man, to raise a child on your own is hard. Yes, I agree that we need more fathers to step up, but I don't think that that's the, the problem, but I think it's part of the problem, if that's to say. But, but but I know moms that's doing a phenomenal job. Oh yeah, it's not it's not thrashing the mother at all, saying she's not she can't raise a kid. But in two parent households, it, just statistically, you get them the a better kid, chance. The kid's gonna be better off. You do. You give them a better. And my chance. my mother offered me something that different than what my father offered me. Right, completely different lessons. Let's say. I agree. Came with that. through each parent. And my father taught me respect, discipline, you know. There are, there, are, there are boundaries. Like I was properly scared of them, you know, I wasn't gonna cross a line. But he taught me a lot of good values, I feel. If I didn't have that, maybe I would have looked to be part of something else. And again, if I'm in the inner city, gang culture, now you're part of, everyone wants to belong. You know, nobody Correct. wants us to be alone out there, I don't think, right? They want to belong to something. I would love to see the two-parent household work because I know what it did for my house, that separation anxiety yep. when mom and dad divorced. And I was raised by a single father. So when I say a single father, my dad took me in a divorce. Okay. Um, until he got remarried, I watched my dad clean, cook, work two jobs to make sure I at least have a roof over my head. So if my dad worked overnight, I was running the street. Yeah. So, so, but the, the things that my dad instilled in me as a father though, that, that father love. Now I'm gonna make my own mistakes. I'm, I'm still gonna make those, but I always go back to those principles of my dad. And yes, to get, you, you are saying some important things when it comes to that father. I just want to keep putting that credit, giving those moms that credit that's been doing it. That's been, that didn't put three young men through college. They doing a great job. Some of them really just need help. And I think we are saying the same thing. They need help from us. We are in the historical downtown Jackson, Ferris Street. They are revamping this neighborhood, so they are, we bringing it back. It's gonna look beautiful again, but this, we are on holy grounds. This is where a lot of black owned businesses once were. 
Um, I got a lot of confidence that Jackson is about to take this to another level. Um, yeah. They still do shows in the Alamo Theater, but on down, it's a lot of restaurants on that end. But you are. You got in, some great Art Deco in Jackson, yeah. I got to say. Okay, so you're saying this is going to come back, you think? I think it would. I think they are in a development stage of revamping this back to where it once was. Downtown is pretty nice. Quiet and clean, I would say, from what I'm seeing so far. I believe we coming up to, it's gonna to get to a point where we are gonna compete with other states across this world, man. I went to Tougaloo College and I got my PhD from Jackson State University. This is just one campus. This isn't the main campus, this is the downtown campus. Okay, so how did you, what was the turning point? Because getting kicked out of 10 schools doesn't lead to PhD usually. Yeah. Like, how did you change your life, turn it around? I credit God, but not only that, I got shot my senior year in high school. I think God knew what kind of story he wanted to tell when he created me. I got shot second period, 10 o'clock, freak accident. And I was a standout basketball player, ranked in the country playing basketball. I skipped school, went to the neighborhood, sitting with my friend guys, and I just heard boom, and I couldn't even move. That day was the best day of my life because it changed my perspective, but in the moment, it was the worst thing ever. I'm a basketball player and I can't move my left foot and I jump off my left foot. To get that phone call as a parent, get to the doctor, your son been shot. Man, that's the worst conversation you ever want to have with a parent. But that changed the way that I see friends and it changed the way that I see life. If that bullet wouldn't have never hit me, I wouldn't be the man that I am today because it changed the way that I view life. Until you change a person's perspective, you just short, it's a short term fix when you shift a person's mindset because tomorrow I might change. Tomorrow I feel like working out. Today I don't. So, so mindsets are altered by your mood. But when your perspective change, that's your morals, your beliefs, your values, your lived experiences. That bullet changed my perspective. So with me having a 1.8 GPA and a 14 on my ACT, kicked out of 10 schools, I was arrested for breaking and entering my fifth grade year. Breaking and entering in the state fairground. Judge gave me um, what he labeled it as trespass. And I didn't even know he was changing my life. He was helping me, honestly. Because if he would have kept the crime at what it's supposed to be, breaking and entering, who's to say? But I didn't know at the time with him changing to trespassing, he was really helping me as a young kid. But man, I did so much. I was I repeated eighth grade, man. So that bullet came at a time that I probably really needed the most because it turned me to an educator. It turned me to a scholar. Because when I laid on that bed and they told me I probably won't play basketball that my senior year, I was hurt, man. I was getting recruited by so many colleges in the country. And I'm first generational everything. So when I got shot, man, that, that hurted my entire family because they were like, this is our, our way out. Just imagine that you're a standout basketball player and now I can't even jump off the same foot that I jump off. I'm, I got a bullet in that foot now. That changed the way I see life, man. So when I was blessed to get back on the court, it was over with. And at that point, it wasn't about basketball no more. It was about how can I do something different for my family? And that's what turned me to this guy you see now. This is the historical Tougaloo College. What did you get your PhD in? Executive leadership in higher education. I got my bachelor's, I got my master's degree from this college. So how did you afford it? I was on a basketball scholarship, but I knew what I wanted at this point. Once that bullet hit me, I realized that I need education just in case basketball don't work again. When I got to college, only time I probably missed the class if we was on the road playing basketball. But other than that, I missed not one. I didn't miss one class in college. How was it with your friends? You get out in the basketball scholarship from the eyes of the community. You're doing successful things. Was there a lot of envy around you? Was it like some of your friends fall off because they're like, oh, Tommy doesn't, you know, he's too good for us now or any I of that stuff? Off. I fell you off. You fell off, okay. When, when I got to a place where, and this is my mindset now, in order to get something you never had, you gotta do something you never did and become a person you never been. 
I couldn't have the same mentality I had growing up in college. When I got to a place after I got shot, I looked at friends different. I separated myself from the community, my friends, everything. I was so dedicated to my ball players and basketball. I didn't have time to run the streets. I knew what friends got me back then. So when I got to college, it was mainly about my basketball players, class, and that sport. That's all I was dedicated to. It wasn't me going out and doing anything like that. I was all about, I had fun in college. I did, but I was so grounded. You see what we're doing here? Transforming students in preparation for tomorrow's professions. Where is everyone? Everybody's on break right now. Yeah, that's right. Let me see if she have a yearbook. Oh, I have great architecture here. Gotta say, Jackson has been a surprise. A, people, everyone I've talked to, from the hotel receptionist to the barista, waiter, people on the streets, very, very open, cool. There's always, the South is known for Southern hospitality, but I'd say it's at a more extreme level here in Jackson, not in an artificial way, but in a, a very kind, genuine, open, curious, interested way, which has been great. It's a really a cool city to travel to. I didn't think it would be like this, to be honest. This is the 2011 Tougaloo College yearbook. This is my run for Mr. Tougaloo College. And there I go. So I represented the male population as the king here. Take a lot of pride in that, man. <laughs> You like no people being around? Well, I really missed, I call them my babies. They're the students here at Tugaloo College uh, yeah. because I'm mama to some, I'm TT to others. So all of them are like my babies. So it, it is really quiet today and I'm really not used to it. So you feel like you're the mother and the auntie here? Mother slash auntie. Yeah. You're watching over them, making sure they behave. Encouraging your kids. them, all of it. I feed them. Yeah, yeah. You got some good soul food? Yes, I cook. What are you cooking? Ooh, all kinds of stuff. Uh -oh. Ooh, I do homemade dressing. I do fresh green beans. <laughs> I love this. Potatoes and turkey necks in them. Uh, baked chicken, baked pork chops with homemade gravy. <laughs> I do homemade uh, Thanksgiving every day. <laughs> Thanksgiving <laughs> every day. Not every day, <laughs> but I cook at least three times a week, and it's enough for at least two days. And you bring the food in here for the students. I bring some of them food. Yes, I, I buy their food. I bless, I just randomly bless some of them each day, yeah. Or someone may not have enough on their card and I'll take up the slack for it, so yeah. That's cool. They're my babies. All yeah. right. <laughs> That's what we do here, man. That loving family environment. Wouldn't that be amazing you drop your kids off at school and then you understand that you have a community around them to help them get through college. Like she just said, that's, that's the entire college. We're a family. So what do you think would have happened if you didn't get that scholarship? I probably would have never came to college. My, my family couldn't afford for me to go to college and I don't even think college would have been on my mind if it wasn't for basketball. When I came here, just imagine a kid, body full of tattoos, this is who I am, I love this guy, and I had permanent gold teeth, not something you can take out. I had to have surgery to get my goals removed my senior year here. So throughout life, middle school and high school, in college, I had gold teeth. So, and I was the king of the university. My story runs deep, man, but I was the first male student in Tougaloo College history to get a bachelor's degree and a master's from the same college. I'm the first male to do it. So, man, I love this place. This is, this is where it's at, man. You look happy here. I am, this, you can feel it? Yeah. I am. My dad worked here. I was wanting you to meet him, but he's not. Your dad works here? He's part of the custodian staff. I call my dad my hero for a lot of reasons, man. My dad could have gave up on me a long time ago. I gave him every reason to. Just imagine you sitting in the office and somebody tell you, the teacher said, if he come back to school, she wouldn't. And as a parent, you're like, wow, man, my son is that bad? I gave my dad every reason to quit. My dad never gave up on me. Then to this day, I love that man. My mom too, same way. 
So you had both your parents supporting you. Yeah, I, I can say my mom and my dad has always been active in my life, but my mom stayed in one part of Jackson, my dad stayed in another part of Jackson, and they had their own lives. So for the most part, I stayed with my dad my entire life, but my dad was working two jobs. My dad worked overnight. So how you doing, Mr. Prime? Hey, man. You doing all right? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm your hero. <laughs> ah! I've been keeping up with you, man, and I've just written a uh, children's book. You just, for real? Yeah, and I'm gonna put it out in the spring semester. So I want to call and get some, uh, get some advice from you, man, on publishing and all of that, on how I need to proceed with it. Whenever you're ready, I got it. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Thank you, I man. No problem. Dr. Mabry. I know. I oh, know. yeah. Dr. I just Samson, Dr. provost. Samson. Yes, sir. This the new provost here at the hey. college. How Peter, you, sir? nice to meet Good you, sir. Samson. Very good to meet you. Very Great to meet you. you. Welcome back home. Thank you, man. Good Thank to you have so you always. much. Hi, man, it's a blessing. Hey, hey, Doc. This was my home. They embraced me as a kid that came from the neighborhood that I grew up in. You all showed me that it's possible here. You all embraced me as a kid. And when they say meet a kid where he's at, you all did exactly that. Who wouldn't want to send their kids here? Absolutely. And this is the thing. It's all about, like you said, it's about preparation and opportunity. Because when you're prepared and you have the opportunity, the success is guaranteed. Mm. That's it. That's you good. think anyone can make it as long as they apply themselves? Anyone can make it. Anyone can make it. And, and that's what it takes, application. How do you well, re how you do you reach the Let me pull that back. It takes consistency in application. How do you reach the kids in the hoods here in Jackson that are in pretty hard how circumstances? Them? Like uh, how do, how do they know that this is even available? Right? If their environment is pretty small and confined, how do they know they can even do this? Uh, conversation, real conversation, not the pie in the sky stuff and like, hey, every student's gonna make A's and every student's <laughs> gonna be a millionaire. No, that's 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 not real. It takes authenticity. Be a real person, like, hey, if you wanna make it, then this is what you do, and you will be successful, and you can make it to wherever your 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 dreams and desires are. But it takes what consistency and application in doing that. So don't if you say you want to be successful and I tell you this is how you do it don't half do it do it 110 percent mm. is Tommy's story super rare or is that happening more frequently than we know far more frequently than we know he's just a fabulous face for the store <laughs> fabulous face for the store but there are successes everywhere that we don't celebrate enough and so that's why it's good that he's doing right what he's doing right now, tell the story. Jackson, Mississippi is, is, is a gem. You lived in other places. I have. I have and, from and what Florida would, what to would Tennessee to North Carolina. And it's always Mississippi. You're from Mississippi. Ah, and, and, and the horror stories. And I'm like, hey, it's not 1943 anymore. This is a fabulous place, but you need to come and experience it for yourself. Do you think the opportunities are there? If a kid's got the drive, can go to higher education here, mm -hmm. make some something. There, there are no barriers, really. The, the barrier is not trying. That's the only barrier. That's the, it's here. It's here. If you want to succeed, we can find a way to su support you to your success. How much is tuition? Tuition here, I think, for annually is right about 12000 Okay. So on the low side yes. these days... Yes, especially for a private, right. almost Ivy League institution, um, that's that's amazingly affordable. Scholarships available. Grants available. Student loans. You got to take them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I paid my own way. I went to community college the first two years, uh -huh. and then I could pull off university afterwards. But and guess what? For community college students, they can get a Phi Theta Kappa scholarship that will pay for their last four semesters here. Okay. See, Risa, you got to let them know that. That's why right, I said. Because the narrative is education is too expensive, it's crazy expensive, and there's no way in. I mean, that's a common narrative these days. Mm -hmm. But you're but you saying the opposite. Information, information. That's why communication is important. Like, hey, communication is, is essential to success. There are avenues to assist and support every student from every area. Okay. 
So you want you want more of Tommy's stories coming in? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I want more. Because we all got a story, and none of the stories are the same. Yes. The success is the same, but the stories aren't. Yeah. So you come and put the work in so that we can get to the success. This easily could be a story where I'm just showing you the worst things that happen in Jackson, the worst houses. There's some bad apples in every neighborhood. But let's just start highlighting the goods that's in the neighborhood. Yep. Let's, let's, let's start talking more about the success stories that made it out. Because that's the only way you can shift the, the paradigm. Yeah. By showing young kids that even you can make it. That's the best way for you to show a kid is giving him an example and a model of somebody that made it out of his neighborhood. Until you able to show him that, look, this young man looked just like you. This young man is no better than you. This young man went to the same schools as you, but yet he's gone to college. He got a bachelor's degree. Now he's got his PhD. You, what you are doing is you are building an example and a system around him that he can operate now and say, look, that's familiarity. And breaking down the artificial narrative saying you can't make it because you're poor, you can't make it because you're black, you can't make it for whatever reason. Breaking that down because it's not truth. It's not, it's man. B, it's BS. You got and, that, and that And that takes all the agency out of a kid. You can do what you did here. Don't set limits for them. Because when you set limits and you tell me what I can and can't do, the only thing you're telling me is you couldn't do it if you saw yourself in my predicament. No, don't put a ceiling on them. Let them figure it out for themselves. When you tell a kid you can't make it out of this environment, you can't do this, what you're doing is you're limiting his growth. And you're saying that under those circumstances, you can't see him making it and that's not true. This is the Shady Oaks area. Um, Mega Evers, home civil rights leaders in this environment. That's one of the, another school I went to growing up. Interesting thing about Jackson is there are large tracts of land that are vacant, grown over. We're still in the city, right? We're still in the city, but a lot of these places used to be businesses that was operating at once. A lot of these places are coming back, but these are still like they used to be a gas station, but now it's not. You're getting ready to eat some good soul food, man. You're getting ready to eat some good, good, great soul food. So bullies, you grew up going here or what's the story with bullies? I've been eating at bullies for years, man. It's just the hospitality you get when you come in here, man. You have people from senators, congressmen, everybody coming. All coming to bullies, huh? Yes. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I saw in the oh, airport. You ah, no, are you fine? She told me. I she saw her in the, the airport. airport. Yeah. You know we love you. It's my man, Peter. How you doing, ma'am? I'm Greta. Nice he, to meet you, Greta. He traveled the world. He traveled the world. And We're doing a video today. Okay, okay. So yeah. I wanted to highlight books. This is oh, where we eat nice. at. You're going to yeah. love it. Tommy's saying best soul food around. <laughs> Do you all agree so far? Do y'all love it so far? We saw on TV. We saw on TV. Oh, wow. True South. Oh. Wow. How is it, you guys? See that? That means I told the truth, apparently, right? <laughs> this is my barber. The barber. How you doing? Peter. The first nice Marquise. Listen, listen, I wish he would have recorded saying, what is dressing? <laughs> I, I said, what, what is dressing? <laughs> tell him, salad dressing? Tell <laughs> you guys love that. He said salad dressing. Yeah, yeah. Salad, salad dressing for my chicken? Come on. Tell him again what dressing is so they would know it. We may call a cornbread dressing in the South, but I think they call it stuffing in New York. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a good way. That was a good way to put that too. He said right. salad dressing. <laughs> All right, stuff me up. I'm in. Hey man, nice to meet you, man. Take nice care. You. Yes. Miller. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Peter Santanello. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, nice to meet you. I need to get my hair cut too. Oh, come yeah, on, man. come on. Well, well, get, see, get no, but he can line you up. We're in the same club, man. <laughs> you can get the, oh, yeah. the shape yeah. up. Shaking it all over his head. A good thing about Marquise, he come from the neighborhood I come from. And what I was what we talk about a lot is 
it's more ways to be successful. Bring into what I was telling you earlier. I encourage young kids, go to barber school. Get, get your barber license. Own you a shop. He owned his own shop. Not only that, he put young barbers in position to go off and get their own shop. So I've seen him mentor barbers out the barbers out the barbers. Everybody's not going to go to college. But to get a trade and find, it's so Right, many. yeah, we didn't talk about that today. Yeah. It's, I would love for kids to go to college, but I also would love for them to find their path. Certain kids don't want to go to college. For sure. But it's so many ways that they can be successful. Plumbers, electricians, yeah. drivers. Now and I there, think, there's a shortage all over the country right now for those trades. And that's where you make real money. Yeah. Change your life? Oh, yeah. Life changer. For real. I've uh, been cutting hair about 13 years now. Been owning my shop for seven. It's taking me everywhere I wanted to go. You want to explain to him what I got? This is beautiful. Big chicken, cornbread, mac and cheese. Oh, it's just all dressing. Okay. Check that tenderness. You can see how tender it is. Sound look like look. <laughs> oh yeah. Tender, juicy. See? Little crisp. Yeah. Love it. That's good. I wanted you to see the different shades of Jackson, Mississippi. These are brilliant homes, black and white owned homes. And we we are still in North Jackson. Yeah. So this is only a few minutes from where I was born. I love that that home. I've seen Oh, wow, that's a like a times. castle. So when you were a kid, did you ever come over to these neighborhoods? I always wanted to be in one of these neighborhoods. I didn't think I would one day be able to afford a home like this until now I got a beautiful home. I used to always say, man, I want the gate, the white fence. Look at that place. That is huge. Man. A lot of property in the city. But but you got to protect your imaginations. And I tell young kids that if you can dream it, you can have it. It's the law of attraction for me. The universe is discipline. So if you tell the universe that's what you want, you got to work hard and the universe is going to bring you all the resources you need. But you got to work. You got to work. And you can get the nice things. These are just working families. So you can't blame it on black, white, or race. No, these are black people in white. But you just got to work for that. And nothing gonna just come to you in life. You gotta work. Right, and you gotta fail, and you gotta pick up again, and whatever it takes. Maybe but, you don't fail, but a lot of people are, you know, especially in entrepreneurship, when you grow most up of like, it's failure. When you grow up like me, you think you're limited. You think, um, right. you think that this is impossible. But everything is impossible until somebody does it. Yeah. Our kids have great assets to college, jobs, it's tons of jobs in this area. So to me, it's a choice. Yeah, okay, here's a point I'd like to make. I travel all over the country. What I notice in inner city America, the opportunities are there. You just have to go up this road, or if you're in, in the Bronx, some bad part of the Bronx in New York, you just gotta get on the subway and go to where the job is. There are parts of the country like Appalachia out in the sticks of West Virginia, they don't have that option. Mm. They're like, no jobs. No jobs for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 miles, right? Wow. Like, they're stuck. These kids are stuck mentally. Okay. But the opportunities here, right across the street. Look, this is one of the biggest hospitals in Jackson. And this on the backside of my neighborhood. You know how many jobs in that one building, but you gotta go to school to get in that building for for that kind of job. Like you you go to school for it. The access to that, to those jobs is here. Try something. Yeah, you gotta try. It's a must that you try. And if you are failing in today's time, I tell a lot of kids is either you're lazy or you're sorry. Why? Because you have a smartphone in your pocket. You have a smartphone with dumb habits. 
You can do everything on your phone. You can translate Spanish to English. You can break down two-step equations on your phone. Right now, your phone, you can take a picture of, an, of a book and it can screenshot it and write it. It'll write it for you. You have all the tools to be successful in today's time. There's no way I would be failing and you can go on YouTube and break down everything step by step by step. Right. But you gotta want it. That's why I said I can't make excuses for you. You gotta want it. If you can see it and you work hard, you can get it. Yeah, the work hard part is the, is the critical part though. You know, like yeah. you have to put in the time. And it's not gonna come overnight. I wanted to show you a lot of different parts of Jackson. Jackson is a beautiful place, man. But again, you gotta, you gotta show the, the world this because they think it's only cotton and open fields. No, Jackson is beautiful. And as you see, this beautiful people. Yeah, it is peaceful here. When I got on YouTube, I think the first video that popped up or one of the first were 10 reasons not to live in Jackson. See, I don't like that, man. That because you, this, huh? the part, this the part that they don't show. They just show the, the, the struggle, I must as, say. As a creator, you have the power of what to show and what to edit. And I can show, you know. You got the right to I can show, show that. that, or I can show that. And mm. I can put the camera where I want it, and I can direct the audience however I want, right? That's the power of the creator. So. You're right. You can just sit. Man. You can you can sit. And just do here. the right thing, man. You yeah. see that? Just do the right thing. <laughs> All right, Tommy. That was awesome, man. Appreciate it. Man, listen. Thank you for showing my city, Jackson, Mississippi. So when you see people like me, when I say people like me that come from challenging areas, you will see the greatness within them. Yeah. You will see the genius within him. So. I'm excited for you all, the world, to just see Jackson, Mississippi as a whole and just see the beautiful things that come out this place. What I really loved about today was obviously your story, but driving home the point that it's actually not that far away from where you grew up and where you succeeded in life. Yes. And the barrier is mostly in people's heads. Yes. Like they can do that. The opportunity is here. Don't let anyone tell you you can't because of your color, because of your economic mm. status, because of anything, because in Jackson, Mississippi, what yeah. we saw today, it's the reality. You're the walking reality. I appreciate that. It's not an expiration date on success. And I'm gonna leave you with my quote. Okay. I cannot walk in my future with my foot in my past. You gotta be able to look past wherever you've gone through in life. Right, you can't control the past, only the future. Yes, sir. And Tommy, you, you're doing some cool stuff here, so. This is Little Tommy 4B's pre-K to third grade book. This is my new book, Perspective for Educators Across the World. This is my middle school book, If Tommy Can Do It, We Can Do It. Nice. Sixth through eighth grade. And this is my prize, A Dark Journey to a Light Future. This is my life story. This is to show you that it's not an expiration date on success. One day I'll have the movie to this book. I just wrote the movie to it. So hopefully one day God can bring that to reality. But this is my four books, man. All right, and Tommy, you do speaking all over the world. Yes. You're a busy man. I'm gonna leave those links down below for the books. And if you're interested in Tommy's speaking engagements, uh, to hire him for a speaking engagement, links down below. Thanks, brother. Oh, man. Yeah. We did. Uh, thanks man. for doing it. Thanks we, for doing we it. We did it. We did it. All right, guys. Thanks for coming along on that journey. Until the next one.